we welcome the inaugural opening earlier this week of the high-level dialogue on sustainable development as a key step towards the implementation of the RIVA Plus 20 outcome document. We expect that the high-level dialogue will enforce and put into action the three pillars of sustainable development, economic prosperity, social equity, and environmental protection with a firm commitment of the member states to deliver on those priority areas. We recall the huge effort it took to, for th this organization to agree last year in Rio on the wide-ranging framework for a world working cooperatively towards a sustainable future, and we are hopeful that this effort will yield its results sooner rather than later. Monsieur le Président, Mr. President, for the Republic of Moldova, sustainable development is the only way of ensuring a decent life for its population. And thus, we must achieve economic development and resolve the problems of energy security and simultaneously make our environment healthy. And thus, my government is concentrating its efforts in partnership with international stakeholders and particularly the European Union, which acts as a point of reference for our national policies. We believe that the political determination, mutual assistance and transparency on all important issues will bring positive change, both for the developed economies as for the emerging and poor economies. We believe that matters such as eradication of poverty, human rights and tolerance, access to a high quality education without discrimination between boys and girls, decent jobs for all, the protection of nature and biodiversity, all these should be given particular priority in the United Nations agenda for development over the coming years. Intersectoral cooperation is also a key issue, and it is for this reason that international partners, the community of donors, including the private sector and civil society, should work hand-in-hand hand with the United Nations and governments in order to mobilize the necessary funding and channel it towards concrete projects that are results-based and also towards investment in these essential spheres. I would also like to talk about problems of migration and the dynamic of populations. The United Nations have frequently recognized that migration may be beneficial, both for the development of the countries of origin and for the countries of destination, when international cooperation is strengthened and appropriate policies are in place. And that certainly applies in the case of the Republic of Moldova, where migration has contributed to macroeconomic stability over recent years. Simultaneously, we are undergoing a phase of considerable change that can influence our paradigm in terms of population, economy, social structure, and security. Investing in human capital is certainly a way out of demographic volatility and constitutes an essential condition for the prosperity of a country while ensuring respect for human rights. And thus, we intend to reduce interdependence between development and migration flows and create an en enabling environment for community development, including for small and medium enterprises direct financial aid with direct financial aid from the state budget. However, I would like to draw your attention to the positive examples by partnerships in mobility between the Republic of Moldova and the European Union. This initiative has enhanced the capacity of the government to formulate and implement migration policies and to identify shared priorities with the European Union and, development, and develop innovative and strategic legislative initiatives based on best practices. There can be no doubt that we should continue in this spirit. Since this is the only way to arrive at mutually accepted solutions for regular and circular migration, 
to the benefit of our citizens while ensuring protection of human rights and guaranteeing social security. Mr. President, may I touch on one of the most important achievements of our August Assembly, namely the adoption of the Arms Trade Treaty, which was made possible after several years of debate and intense negotiation on the regulation of world arms trade. The Republic of Moldova signed the ATT, and we hope that the prompt entry into force of the treaty will ensure that the world arms trade becomes more transparent and legitimate. The ATT can be a major step forward in controlling the proliferation and illicit movement of arms, particularly in areas that are vulnerable and those that do not respect the constitutional regime of sovereign states. In addition, the government is collaborating closely with its European and international partners, particularly with the German Federal Office for the Economy and Control of Exports, and also the OSCE, with a view to reviewing and amending national legislation on control of exports of dual-use goods in order to adopt the best standards and international experience in this sphere. Mr. President, since becoming a member of the Human Rights Council, my country has completed its first cycle of the Universal Periodic, periodic Review, which, in our view, is one of the best exercises to oversee and assess the achievements of national human rights protection institutions and mechanisms. Simultaneously, we have agreed to enter into new commitments in order to meet the challenges during implementation of the recommendations by the UPR. The Republic of Moldova continues to advocate the consideration of the human rights situation by all countries and states that a robust, non-politicized and impartial Human Rights Council should exercise a greater authority, particularly in the event of grave violations of human rights and should also provide guidelines regarding implementation of best practices and standards in this regard. My government is proud to announce the holding of the fourth seminar of French-speaking countries early next year in Chisinau, our capital, in order to consider the outcomes and draw lessons from the first cycle of the Universal Periodic Review. We hope that the conclusions of the conference can contribute to the advancement, strengthening and improvement of the Universal Periodic Review as a, U a mechanism for consideration the record of the human rights performance of all members of the Organization of Francophonie. Program of Reform political, economic, institutional, legislative, demographic, judicial, and more. We are firmly committed to building a state based on the rule of law, good governance, transparency, and accountability. Through these difficult efforts, we become a stronger nation and a better partner internationally, and we must keep pushing ahead. In this connection, we are proud to acknowledge that the government has embarked on a new course of technological modernization to enable <coughs> direct public access to government services. Our aim is to make all such government services available electronically to all citizens by 2020 at any time from anywhere using modern communication technologies and devices such as computers, mobile phones, and interactive payment offices. This kind of system will ensure real transparency in the relationship between citizens and public officials, combat corruption, and reduce unnecessary bureaucracy. The Republic of Moldova is among the leaders in this field, and our efforts have already yielded real benefits to our citizens with the implementation of the electronic catalog for public services, the mobile digital signature, the government electronic payment gateway, and many more. The ambitious reform agenda of the government and its foreign policy alike are both directed towards the fulfillment of the strategic objective of our country, the European integration. At this stage, we have concluded the negotiations of the association agreement with the EU 
as well as of the, its component part, the deep and comprehensive free trade agreement. And the initial end of the text is going to take place at the Eastern Partnership Summit in Vilnius during upcoming November. All these actions, the political association with the EU, the economic approximation and the perspective of the visa-free travel for our citizens are bringing us closer to our final goal, the EU integration, and are opening new perspectives for political and economic cooperation in the region. Mr. President, every year my delegation brings to the attention of this assembly the issue of the protracted conflict in the Transnistrian region, which is affecting my country ever since independence. As a nation who values national consolidation and unity, this conflict is a constant challenge which undermines our development efforts. The political settlement of the conflict and the reintegration of the country is our strategic priority. It envisages uniting the population from the both bank of the Nistru River around shared goals and providing them with a better future. It also moves, means removing one of the most fundamental challenges to our national security, economic development, and social cohesion. Ultimately, resolving the Transnistrian conflict means guaranteeing secured national borders and opening a new perspective of stability and fruitful bilateral and equitable relations with our neighbors and international partners. Peace and dialogue are fundamental prerequisites for a political solution to any conflict. Let me emphasize that there are more than two decades of peace in the region, and we will spare no effort to preserve it further. Moldova is fully committed to dialogue through all available channels. But in order to achieve the desired outcome, we strongly need trust inside the resolution process and genuine engagement and commitment from outside. We advocate for the continuation of the confidence building measures, activities which have been taking place since 2007 with the support of the UNDP and the European Union aiming at bridging the gaps between all the stakeholders from the both banks involving local authorities, business communities, and the civil society. The vision of the government of the Republic of Moldova for a final solution of the conflict, which I will delineate further on, is unambiguous and inclusive. First, the comprehensive and viable solution must be based on the respect for sovereignty and territorial integrity of the country. We are open for a reasonable compromise on a special status of the region within the Republic of Moldova, which would provide the population from the left bank with a comfortable and guaranteed level of self-governance in various areas of public life. There should be a single constitutional, economic, and defense space within internationally recognized borders of Moldova. At the same time, the Republic of Moldova should remain a functional state which continues to advance on its European path and makes every effort to allow the population and the business communities from the both banks to equally benefit from our extensive partnership with the European Union and hopefully within the European Union. On the conflict resolution matter, we will continue with a renewed impetus to seek for solutions in order to ensure the freedom of movement, improve transportation links and new and real opportunities for businesses on the both banks of Nistru. We will also double our efforts to convince our partners to start talks on political and security issues, including on the future status of the region within the recognized border of the Republic of Moldova. Moreover, we will seek to intensify law enforcement interaction, preserve stability in the security zone, and reaffirm our stance for the need to transform the current peacekeeping mechanism into an international civilian mission. Strengthening the respect for human rights is, our utmost, is of utmost importance to us. The report, report of the UN High-Level Advisor for Human Rights in the Transnistrian region of the Republic of Moldova, Mr. Thomas Hammerberg, offers a good roadmap for joint activities in this regard. I would additionally like to reiterate our long-standing 
uh, and unwavering call to finalize the withdrawal of the Russian military forces ammunition and ammunitions from the territory of the Republic of Moldova in accordance with relevant international commitments. Concluding this chapter, I would like to express my government's conviction that the future of the region is brighter if we join our efforts to build a stronger and unified country, open to Europe where it naturally belongs, open to diversity, tolerance, economic and market opportunities. We are optimistic that we can achieve it because there is no better scope we could embrace for the well-being of our people and the consolidation of our nation. Mr. President, the Republic of Moldova places peace and real constructive dialogue above any political goals and ambitions. We follow with great concern the continuing violence in the Middle East and abhor the loss of so many lives and, and future resulting perhaps an, in an irremediable maiming of the cons consciousness of a whole generation, not only the conflict zones, but worldwide. The refugee crisis in Syria magnifies the woes of war. Hundreds of thousands of people have been displaced as they try to save their lives and find peace. My own country has offered protection to a number of Syrian refugees and re recognized the significant burden that Syria's neighbors and other receiving countries, many in Europe, face as they seek to alleviate the Syrian refugees' suffering and offer them a better chance for survival and affirmation of their basic human rights. It is time for all sides to take a step back, find a peaceful solution, and build a future for their people rather than pursue fleeting, treacherous, and so often deadly political goals. In concluding, Mr. President, I would like to express the hope that during the current session, the members of this assembly will succeed in reaching valuable decisions on topic issues such as sustainable development, peace and security, human rights, and many others. My delegation is willing and open to make its contribution in a collaborative and constructive way. Thank you. On behalf of the General Assembly, I wish to thank the Prime Minister of the Republic of Moldova for this statement just made and request protocol to escort His Excellency.